My brother first introduced me to Jiu Jitsu about seven months ago. He came down to Richmond um, to stay with me for a little while and showed me some fights online and things like that. At first, I didn't really believe. I was like, Jiu Jitsu, what the hell is this? Some guys like rolling around, <laughs> putting, you know, like, just like rolling around and touching each other. <laughs> And I was I didn't I didn't know what it was all about. And then I started watching some videos and you know talk, talking to some people about it. And uh, about six months ago, I started I went to, down to this academy in Richmond where I train. It's called the Richmond Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Self Defense Academy. And went in there one day and just you know just to see what this is all about. And uh, first you know when I walked in there I just fell in love with it and went out and ordered myself. A gi online, and you know, just started training. On your wrist, with your other hand. So I've been training for about six months, and um, the jujitsu has pretty much changed my life. fights will most likely end up on the ground. What do I have? It? Both his arms here. You guys see? Very dominant position. So what do I have from here? I can reach my hand underneath his head and grab his wrist. So I very strong control here. Most martial arts don't really dive into the groundwork. They're based upon the kicking and the punching and even in some martial arts throws or basic submission holds like wrist locks, uh, pain holds against a joint. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in specific really uh, prepares you for if or when the fight goes to the ground. So um, whether you take the fight to the ground yourself or there's a bigger um, opponent that you're fighting that puts you down on the ground, you're gonna be well prepared on the ground to defend yourself and to uh, hopefully get out of the altercation with as little damage as possible. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I am never doing that. People sweat on you. And <laughs> it's, it's the greatest self-defense for women. Um, you know, you can, you can control guys that are a lot bigger than you. It teaches you how to fight from your back. If, if a woman's gonna be attacked, she's gonna get put on her back. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of a woman being attacked. So it's, it's a great way to learn to defend yourself and learn how not to panic if you get put in that situation. And it gives you tools, not only to um, either make your attacker unconscious or just to get away. So you have a lot of options, and I think that's really why I started, but I stay in it because it's so much fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. time in the training here inside the school to focus on the ground technique me or my students uh, will pair up and shake hands and we'll start and we'll do something called a roll and a roll can be just a free open roll it can be for as many minutes as you want it can be until the first person gives up or it can be a timed round of five six seven ten minutes um, you basically start on the knees and you train um, it's it's almost full blast we take the striking element out of the live rolling in general in the room so that you can focus on your techniques 
of position, uh, trying to dominate position on the ground, get a good hold on somebody. We also work specifically on submission, um, which is very different from a lot of other martial arts where you just kick and punch. We work a lot on um, choke holds, arm locks, joint locks in general, shoulder, elbow, wrist, uh, chokes, like I said, uh, knee locks, knee bars, as they're known, and foot locks, both attacking the ankle, uh, the top of the toes. So um, the general term of rolling just means a free sparring session in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You're completely down there fighting. All right, let's go. Much training. call it rolling because you're literally oftentimes rolling across the floor with your partner. Come on, Barrett. Yeah, keep going. Keep turning. Oh my god. I'm not the best. I'm not the best. <laughs> the advantage to rolling is you get to spar 100% against somebody who's resisting you. And you get to learn very quickly what works and what doesn't work every beginner walks in there and they're going to get arm locked and they're going to get choked and they're going to tap out and they're going to start again you know ev without exception every beginner is going to tap out their first class i can't think of a single person i've ever had at my school who several of my students haven't tapped them the first time they've come in and it can be like a nice uh, chop for your ego for some people some people take it badly but most people get over it pretty quickly and want to get better and that's what it boils down to. Flex your foot right here. I should keep one on the inside. Now come on. <laughs> there. Come on. Now 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 you know, your submissions, things like that, but it's also defined very well in transitions, uh, meaning that you have specific steps to get, say, from side mount to mount or mount to back, things like that, where you can uh, change your position for the better and utilize some of those attacks in those positions. And because of jiu-jitsu's investment in that portion of the game, I think you see a little bit more um, technical approach to it, you know, uh, looking at it from the standpoint of how can a smaller person get, you know, these same type of positions that exist in judo to work on a much larger opponent, you know. Um, and uh, the emphasis on being relaxed and breathing and conserving your energy and, de and defending yourself until your opponent makes a mistake um, has spread a, a certain approach and, and style of playing that I think has, again, given Jiu-Jitsu a very unique characteristic and flow to it that you may not see uh, exemplified in a lot of other martial arts disciplines that maybe, in, uh, uh, maybe encourage things like attributes like speed and power, you know, and things maybe that are a little bit more athletic. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, you know, you can be an athlete or you can be just the guy walking down the street with the high waters on, you know, and you get on the mat, you adapt it to yourself and you make it work for yourself. I think that's you know, very unique to that, to this particular art form. A lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners train only the techniques of jiu-jitsu and they don't worry so much about how strong they are, how fast they are. The heart of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the technique. So I'm very slow and methodical about how I'm out. See? Tight on the upper body pressure, drive my knee over, my knees are on the mat. Now I need to put my foot down and that's the trickiest part. As soon as my foot comes loose, if I'm loose, I'll get caught in a half guard and I don't want that to happen. So 
So I like to keep the foot way out and then slide back in. The technique uh, is what can make or break a fighting scenario. Um, I think personally, my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is based around my technique. I'm not a very strong person. I'm 5'9, 145 pounds. I'm pretty skinny. I don't have big muscles. Um, I think that's actually an advantage for me as an instructor because I have a lot of students that come off the street. They're big, tough guys. And they come in here and they train with me for a night. And I roll them up into a pretzel. And either their egos can handle it and they get excited and they go, oh my god, if this little guy can do that to me, then I need to learn this stuff. Or sometimes their ego can't handle it. You know, they make up excuses and they walk out of the school. And, you know, that's up to each individual. You know, they, they lost out on a huge opportunity as far as I'm concerned. Never keep your feet on the floor. You're trying to put your knees right back in the game. Look at the difference between mount and butterfly. I'm right back in the game. So you push out, I push back, I bridge up, I get one knee in. See, now I'm playing like a half guard with a butterfly hook. There's two butterfly hooks. And it's all about leverage, how I position my body to get the right leverage on the guy, how I use uh, my whole body versus somebody's arm. Um, you know, if I get my body against your arm, well, my whole body is stronger than your arms. So the odds are that I'm going to be able to finish the position that I want to. And the way that I do that is I set myself up in a position where I can apply the most leverage against that arm. All of my positions are based off of, of leverage. My sweeps, my submissions, everything's based off of leverage. Even when I'm talking about transitioning from position to position and pinning you to the mat to keep you under control, it's all about leverage and, and how I keep my weight on top of you. You catch an arm walk or whatever, but you're just trying to get out of side control. The man on top, you're trying to maintain your side control. All right, and that's all that I want you doing. I don't want you submitting or anything like that. Just maintain the side control. All we're working on here is getting out, and then we'll start a couple rounds in that position, okay? You guys ready? Begin. Why somebody wants to compete is going to be different from person to person, definitely. Um, most people want to test their progress out, to test themselves against people who don't know what they're trying to do. The ultimate goal in sport jiu-jitsu is to submit your opponent. 